What are you doing, Shari? What are you doing? You getting a suntan? Yeah. It's hot. Holy crap. My son came up to me, he's eight years old, and he had a little glass jar in his hand. He goes, Daddy, Daddy, can I get some, um, can I go get some lavender? I was like, what do you need lavender for? He goes, well, you know, my Pokemon, they get tired of eating regular fruits and vegetables, and I think they want to eat something that smells sweet. So we went out and we got him some lavender and put it in there, and he's walking around with his little jar, <sighs> smelling it all day, and he's like, ah, oh, my Pokemon are so happy. I mean, what can, you, what can you say to that, really? What can you say to that? Your kid's using their imagination and they're involved in the garden all at the same time. It doesn't get much better than that. The history behind drying is, is really interesting. I mean, they've been doing it for about 12,000 years, roughly. And going in my garden, it's interesting to think about, you know, that little piece of history and how it can affect what we do from here on out. You know, I mean, yeah, I can go to the store and buy like this is basil. I can go buy this basil cheap, but there's something really special to me about preserving our own food and, you know, making it last so we can either share it or use it in our cooking. And it does two things too. So in my area, the basil is an annual. Knowing that it's gonna die and we have a couple months left, you know, we're now downward slope. We're going downhill. I want to get it to produce as much as possible. So I always try and this time of year, I start drying a whole lot of basil, but then I also do my other herbs and I'm doing peppers too. So for instance, this right here, this monstrosity is my lavender. I want to come out here this time of year because trimming it rejuvenates it and causes it to get bushier. And so this time of year is a good time because the plants are generally winding down um, if it like this is way overgrown way overgrown so I can come in now and trim Where I want but then I'll use my cuttings and then what that'll do is it'll cause it to bush out in other areas To bush back. I mean this was really small. I mean I put it in a couple years ago two years ago and it was this big and Now it's I don't even know how big it is basically it's giant this is one reason why we plant this is so we can use it for gifts and stuff like that. And the other reason is because it's very aromatic. In my area, we have a lot of deer and it actually keeps the deer from coming into my garden. It helps repel them. And if you think about it, it's a real simple process. Deer are not top of the food chain. They survive by smell. So they can't see very well. That's why when you see hunters wearing orange and they're deer hunting, they can't really see that. But if they walk into something that smells, as they come up to it, they know that the predator is gonna smell it as well. So they don't get into it. And that's a really good way to think about it. So anytime you wanna plant something around your garden, make sure you're spreading out like aromatic herbs and stuff like that, especially if they're perennial, because once the deer brush up into it, they're gonna stop, turn around, because that scent will alert other predators that they're around. The other thing that I love to dry is my cayenne peppers. and. There's something weird that happened to my cayenne pepper. Let me show you. The other day I came out and you can see there was no leaves on this plant whatsoever. Totally bare of all life on it. I don't know what happened. I don't know if they all fell off. I didn't see any down below or anything, but something ate it. But I noticed over the coming days, I mean, that was like two days ago and now there's already leaves coming back. So we'll see if it can actually continue to grow or if it's gonna survive because it's late in the year and it's not getting as much sun, but it's releafing. So hopefully we can get us a little bit of a harvest off of it. I don't know what this terrible weed is, but it came from the greenhouse and it is now out here. So I'm gonna to have to burn this stuff. I like to come out and get the red peppers and we'll get some of them. We'll get all the red peppers, but even the green ones are the ones like this one, like this one right here is that one's doo-doo brown. That's just about to turn red. So we'll get all the peppers off this plant today because they're gonna turn red eventually. And right now, like this one, it's hot. Holy crap. I gotta be honest, I didn't think it was gonna be hot, but even green is hot. So we're good. My mouth is sweating. Like I told you before, I don't really, I like hot food, but I don't need like crazy hot. So this is perfect. 
I'm not gonna lie, that one got me. But we had our kitchen decorated like all chili peppers and it all came from this. And this is something that we did every year. So drying the cayenne peppers are really big. And if we do it right now, for instance, I'm pulling all of these peppers off, every pepper on the plant, what'll happen is it now signals to the plant like, hey, I need to make more. And it's gonna continue to make more peppers. So we do, I do anticipate within the next month or so we would get another flush of peppers. I already see some flowers on here, so that's good. Man, my nose is running, that pepper got me. But I was gonna, I was thinking about taking this plant over with me to this container garden where I was, but it's rooted into the ground, so it's it's gotta stay here. So I also wanna do my rosemary. And this is perennial in my area as well. This one's been growing here for a couple years. It's gotten a lot bigger, but we want it to take a different shape. And so again, by tr trimming it, it caused it to branch out. I'm gonna show you that right now. You saw the propagation video. I came out and I trimmed this and I may have trimmed it afterwards, but here's where I cut it right here. And then you can see what it's done afterwards. So it started to bush out. So what I really want this to do, if we step back a little bit, is I'd like for it to kind of fill in this gap right here. So we want it to bush out more. And then maybe fill in over here just a little bit, you know, right where these fancy weeds are. And fill in right there. And I think that would be, you know, that would make us happy with the design of this plant. But look, here's another one. I trimmed it there. And look what shot up in like a month. I use fishing line and I like to use fishing line because it doesn't hold any moisture. So you could use thread or something like that, but the fishing line doesn't hold the moisture so it won't encourage rot inside of that pepper. And once I set it up, I leave it. Oh, look at that. I got it threaded in the first try. Thank you guys for being here to witness that. And so you put it on and then you just tie like a simple knot. And then at the other end, this one's kind of jacked up, but it already has a loop on it. So you don't even have to do a loop right now. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna redo it. And I tie a decent sized knot in that because you're going to thread these peppers on here. And you want it to, it's, you're tying a stopper knot is exactly what you're doing. I talked about this in a previous video, but this reminds me a lot of my childhood because when I was growing up, we would do this basically all fall. We would start doing this and then we would just finish out, you know, from late summer all the way into fall. But in the winter, you'd have this laying in the kitchen and you always could grab it. Uh, you could put it in your food. My mom, um, you know, lived, growing up in North Carolina, we didn't get a lot of snow. Actually, we didn't get any snow, we got ice storms. And every time that we get an ice storm, it was like clockwork. She would put a pot of chili on. She would take and she'd put one pepper in, but then we could go up afterwards and just snap them off and put in whatever we wanted to add the heat. And we would have uh, contests to see who could make it the hottest, but also eat the bowl of chili. That was the key, I had to be able to eat it. Now I'll just leave the needle on and we have our peppers and they can dry, they get plenty of airflow, and we actually hang these up in our kitchen as a decoration. The next flush I get, I'll do more of these, but I'm also gonna make some hot pepper vinegar for my greens and stuff for the winter. Now for our aromatic pleasure, we're gonna do a couple herbs. So first up is gonna be basil, okay? And then the trick behind basil is you don't wanna to dry too many together. And we do this a lot and the way I do it is I make little bundles like this, and then I make all the stems face the same way. And you want them all just about even. This is really easy. And I just take the little bit of twine and I wrap it around. That's it. And then what we do is we take these and we'll hang these in our pantry or I'll reuse my seed starting shelf and just set them on there or even hang them, either one. But while they're in there doing that, they're letting off this awesome 
scent. We use it, we'll take it, and then we stick it in a coffee grinder when it's nice and dry and crispy, and we'll just pulse it, just like that, to chop it up, and then we add it to jars and we'll use it throughout the year. Now we will use a lot of fresh basil to make pesto and stuff like that for the winter, but this is always a good way to do it because we have basil for days. I'm gonna go over lavender and rosemary at the, um, separately because they're basically the same. And so what we're gonna do is you do the same thing. You don't wanna do big, huge bunches. You wanna split it up a little bit. And my hands are starting to smell the same. So these are different. You take in, just for demonstration purposes, same thing. We'll do a small bundle like this. You just take it and hold it like this, and then you scrub down the stem, grip it, and then it, all of these will just fall off and that's your flavor. And then you can put them into a jar or something like that. That's all you gotta do. So the, the lavender that we got was a little wet, so I'm gonna leave it out and let it dry for a day before I do it because if I bundle it while it's wet, then it's gonna end up rotting and in, encouraging mold growth and stuff like that on the leaves. So I just leave it out in the sun for a day and then I'll come back. Um, I'll probably leave it out for the rest of the day and then come back before the nightfall, before the dew comes. And then I'll be able to bundle it up tomorrow or something, leave it inside for the night and then bundle it up and then I'll have that to hang out.